who are here and saw the ad, um, I needed you to come with a piece of paper, ideally with a little bit of a grid on it, because that will make your life a little bit easier. You need a pencil, a ruler, and then something circular to draw around. Now I use this piece of card, which you can see I've used lots. It's a six centimeter piece of card that I've made. I use it for my classes. And then I've worked out where the quarter divides are. And that means that it's really easy to um, place it and know that you're doing like a quarter of a circle. My dad will be impressed. He's here and he likes a bit of maths. I'm hot now, all that flurry of being on the wrong page. Um, yeah, so, um, so yes, so I would recommend if you're going to make, you know, a few of these, then it would be worth sitting down and drawing a really accurate circle and doing this. But if not, you can use something like I was using earlier, like a rolling pin to draw your designs. So let's get started for the second time. Um, and it's good to see lots of you have joining me this time. I was a bit offended on my personal page. No one was there to watch. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. So I'm just gonna lower that so you can see uh, my paper rather than me. Um, okay, so I've got my little bit of paper and what I'm gonna start doing is a bag or a pattern like this. Okay, this is a very kind of traditional design and the thing that's a little bit different about sashiko to normal embroidery is that i haven't actually embroidered these in circles and little quarter lines like you might do with embroidery and i'll explain a little bit more later about the the way that you move the thread uh, but yeah so just a nice simple geometric design and then you can see that i've picked up a slightly different color there just to uh, make it a little bit you know make it grab a little bit more so as I, I draw my design I'll talk to you a little bit about sashiko and I'll also use a big blue pen uh, just because it might be a little bit easier for you to see okay so on my grid which is one centimeter um, squares I just need to draw four circles so one here one here and then two below now, even if you don't have embroidery thread and um, fabric at home, this you could still do this step. You could start preparing some patterns. And then when you have those two things, um, you could start adding decorations to pillows and bags and um, clothes and all sorts of things that you might have around the house. Okay, so I've got my four circles. And then in the middle, I'm going to do another circle. So it's almost like a flower, like so. Okay, there you go. And then I just need to do all the quarter lines. So each one, there's a quarter that's taken. So it basically goes from the half, from the halfway line to the halfway line. And that's why my little uh, template comes in handy because I don't have to move it around. I can quickly see that it goes from there to there and there to there. And then this one can be done as a full half circle. My friend made some beautiful sashiko and she wasn't so rigid as just doing it inside a square. So some of these she kind of bubbled out and would carry on and do them. So it ended up being more of a kind of um, an unusual shape rather than just inside a square. So it just depends which way you're inclined. Now sashiko um, is a Japanese word a craft i think it means something like little little stabs or stab needle something like that um, which is basically what it is it was originally used to fix things but now it's used more as decoration and even more recently it's become what they call like visible mending where you um, would maybe like have some jeans that were broken you would put your patch in as normal and then you would create a design like this over that surface so it would be very visible but it would look really nice. And again, classically, it's always done with like a navy fabric and a cream thread. But again, if you go on Pinterest, you'll see all sorts of interesting uh, different versions. So it's, you're not limited to that at all. It's, you know, definitely been modernized. And then when you've got your um, shape, that's your pattern that you're going to use. So you can cut that out and we're gonna translate that now onto the fabric. I'm going to be using um, a navy tote bag today that I bought, um, which, which looks nice. But again, you can use you can use anything. Um, generally, a good quality material. You know, Japanese crafts are generally they don't mess around with their kind of the quality of their materials. Something natural is always good. 
And then let me just find the bag. Here we go. This is the stage I got to earlier when I realised I was on the wrong page. And I've already done one on this bag, so I might actually put it next to it, um, just because then that'll look quite nice. So here we go. So I'm just going to place it there, which is where I'd like it to be. And let me just find, I've got a chalk marker pencil. Again, you can just use a regular chalk or even a white pencil. Just check that it rubs off okay. Um, and then I'm just going to mark off the main intersection. So I kind of want the box that it's going to go in. I can just roughly draw around that so I've got an outline. And then I don't want to do every centimetre. I just want to do the important information, which are the two halfway marks there, the two halfway marks there, there, and there. That should be enough, I think. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, then using my little template again, finding the halfway mark, and then drawing that bottom half of that circle. Repeat at the bottom. So basically, I'm just going to do exactly the same again. But the reason I like that step is that you can obviously get a little bit more confident with the with the steps, so you don't kind of uh, mess it up on the fabric itself. And also, you can keep that pattern and use it again. It's ready ready to go for another time. One circle in the middle, like so. And then, da, 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 oh here, have done the main circles, and then the four main ones that we started with. So it doesn't really matter what order you draw everything in, as long as eventually you get all those semicircles and circles inside the shape there. Now some of this will rub off as I sew, but it doesn't. But as long as you know you've got the final pattern, and you can go back and add some bits afterwards. All right, and then the final little quarter circles there. One, two, three. And hopefully you can just about see. So obviously you can take a little bit longer than this when you're doing your fabric. I don't know if you can just about see those lines there. All right, so that's what I'm going to be using today. Now I'm going to be using actual Sashiko thread, but it's very similar to embroidery thread and its thickness. The, the main difference is that it's more kind of natural cotton. Uh, this yellow one actually is embroidery thread. I'm gonna move this off out of the way so I can just use the white stuff. Or if it'll come off, I'll just get that out of the way. I always try and um, put a little bit of color like this red line here through the work and it just makes it pop, I find. And that's the end, where is the beginning? Sorry. Should have done this before, sorry. I need about a metre of thread, hopefully. Ah, there it is. And do ask any questions. Uh, do let me know where you are, where you're, where you're watching from. Put my face back on for a minute whilst I get myself sorted. Oh, this will be a tiny one. Um, one of the threads. Oh, yeah, so the main difference, I think, with this thread and an embroidery thread, but like I said, I wouldn't bother going out of your way to buy any. It's actually fairly expensive. I actually bought mine when I was in, I lived in China, um, so it was cheaper there. But I've noticed when I've seen it on sale on websites, it's quite expensive and it's not, it doesn't look any different. But you'll notice uh, an embroidery thread is quite twisted, whilst this one isn't, it's quite flat. Um, and then when sewing, if possible, you need to find your longest needle that you have in the house. I'm using a darning needle there. So to cut off a nice end, try and thread it. Note to self, do this in, back, in advance in future. Oh, there's a tiny hole. got any top tips for threading a needle. I'm actually generally quite good at it. I think I'm all hot and bothered from that little mistake I made at the beginning. Just looking around my house, wonder if I've got any other needles. <laughs> With better light. There you go. Do let me know if you've uh, been eating out to help out as well. 
that's become my new favourite thing. I think that's why I came here all dishevelled. Hi Anne, have you got any tips for threading a, a needle when you're live and you've got people watching you trying to do it? Yeah, the weather is so weird today, isn't it? I just went out with an umbrella and wish I'd had sunglasses. Right, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, split it a bit so I've got less. It's not as easy to split actually, as you'll see. Because it's, uh, but I, won't, I don't need much, I just need enough to show you what to do. So we've got Lincolnshire and Somerset, that's a good mix. I'm in, I'm in Cardiff. My dad, who always likes to join, is in Cornwall. So yeah, good, a good range of places. Ah, yes. Whew, got it through. Yay! Let's all have a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, back to some sewing. All right, so um, let me just show you first on the picture, actually. Where did I put that pattern here? Okay, so let me just show you on here because it might make a bit more sense. So what you don't want to do is do circles and then lots of little bits like that because then that will all pull. You want it all to flow. So let me tilt, tilt it back down so you can see it on here. So what, I, what, what they suggest doing in the, the traditional way is that let's say you start by here, is that you would take it down to the opposite side, like that, that pink line there. And then you wouldn't really ever like turn direction. So you, you can go back on yourself, so you can constantly do this, but you wouldn't then start going that way. You want it to kind of flow back. So I would then do a kind of an about turn and do that one instead. So I'm coming back up that way there. So my thread is going that way. And I can't remember where I just ended there or there, but either way, I would then go maybe gently around that corner and then I would repeat that up to there and repeat it back. So I'm building up those circles, but in a slightly different way. And then the other thing is that you try and do as many stitches as possible um, without taking, you don't do a stitch one, then the next, then the next. You keep going through. Now I put a knot on the end, I haven't actually yet, um, but the class, the traditional way of doing it is where you kind of weave the ends in. I don't really like that way and I find it quite time consuming, but you should really, if you're doing the, the classic sashiko way, is, um, is kind of take the thread and put it back through on the, on the, the journey, I suppose. So my thread's all a bit malted from all that drama there. So I'm going to take it down here on this little journey. But can you see this picture here? What I need to be careful to do is when I get to the centres, I don't want those stitches to overlap. I don't want where they cross. I want there to be a little bit of space. So I'm going to need to be quite careful to make sure that I plan my stitches well. And the other thing is that the stitches need to be bigger on the top. So it's a running stitch, but with longer stitches on the top and a little bit of um, thread on the bottom. So if I'm talking in say millimeters, it would be maybe a five millimeter stitch and then a two millimeter space before you um, start your next stitch. So I'm gonna try and keep my needle going for as long as possible. And that makes it look really smooth. So I'm going in and out in and out in and out so i'm nearly at that scent i'm nearly at that crossing now so this is where i'm going to have to plan my stitches quite well so that i don't cross over that intersecting line there so i'm just going to have to look a second to make sure i do that well and um, i'll go there and there and there there just talking to myself so it's actually ended up my maths is a little bit off there I'm just going to carry on, but you can spend a little bit more time. That's definitely the thing that will take a little bit longer to work out. So in, so five millimetres at the top, two millimetres the space. And I'm going to try and go until my needle is totally full of stitches. And then I'm going to pull them all through together. Again, I've seen some videos where they use like the most amazing long needles and they literally can go like the length of a blanket pretty incredible and just you've always got to make sure you're still following the right line I'm suddenly panicking that I'm not one two 
nearly there. Three, oh, my sizing's a bit off. Two, so will I make it all the way to the end? I've done it before, can I do it now? Underneath five, out, and up again. Right, so can you see, all scrunched up, that's the whole length, grabbing the needle and then pulling it all through. Ooh, nearly lost my thread. Don't want it, I don't want you to have to go through watching me do that again. Pulling it through all the way, making sure that it's not gathered, stretching them out, and there you have one line. So like I said, if I was now to go back, get the light, I'm here right now, and then I would do an about turn, and I would do exactly the same all the way up to there, but I'd again be quite careful, sorry about the bright light, to not Put a stitch on those little intersections there so that would be the design now you can see i've made the most of these long lines and at one point there i've changed the color to a red and i've inserted a red thread and that kind of makes it kind of obvious that they're not circles anymore so here i could now stop or i could about turn and come back this way and again, if you wanted to do the, the traditional Japanese way, you would literally like weave the ends in by taking the thread and kind of taking it on a little journey, I guess on the underside so that it was less visible. But I don't really like that way. I just put it in and then do a knot behind. But like I said, just be careful to make sure that it's not all gathered. All right, so those are the kind of the main sashiko tips. So I'm just going to carry on and I'm going to go through a couple of more patterns for you uh, because that's kind of just the start, the circular one. I'll show you how to do. We've done this one. So again, you could go as big as you wanted. And depending on the size of your circles, you could fill a big or small space. And then I'll show you this one, which maybe you'll be able to instantly see. But I'll talk a little bit about how you would use the thread. And um, this one looks really tricky, but it's actually quite good, fun. And uh, maybe this one here, the diamonds, but there's loads of opportunities online. So using my grid paper again, and this one that I showed you is just straight lines. So I'm gonna do, I'm trying to remember how many size it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This obviously totally doesn't matter what size you do. Three, six, seven. You can decide, but I'm just going to copy that design. So I'm just drawing a rectangle there, and then I'm going to draw another one. I'm just going to not use the ruler for a second, it's a bit quicker. There. So three that way, and three that way. So an odd number means that one sticks out, like so. All right, so that again, it looks kind of boring like that, but again, if you use a different colour, then you'd be able to uh, fill it with lots of interest, you know, make it kind of stand out. So the way that you'd sew, that's probably the easiest one that um, I'm showing you today, is that I would do, I'd say start here, and then I'd go down, and stop, I'd turn this corner, I'd go up, and then I'd jump to this one. I'd go down, I'd go across, I'd stop, I'd go up to this corner, this behind, down, across, and up, and then I'd obviously, and then I'd probably finish that thread. Then, with the next piece of thread, I would do the horizontal lines. So doing exactly the same until you built up the shape. Now you may have a few little spaces that you need to fill at the end, but what you don't want to do is stretch that thread. So you want to make sure you do long straight lines in the same direction where possible. So that's a very simple grid shape. Um, this one here is also quite a nice shape. And again, you can use as much or as little as you like of it. So, do you remember how you do that? Oh yeah, I remember. So, you would draw the squares. So you've got the squares, and can you see there's, it's their, their four size, but actually I don't wanna do it that big on this piece of paper, because that'll be huge. So I'm just gonna do one, and then I'm gonna leave, oh, it's actually a space and a half there. That's why they've used space and a half there space and a half, space and a half. Okay, so that's the basic structure of that one. And then you would use a ruler to join those edges. 
I uh, just to let you know, also remember, I do have a video on this on my website. I've got a website, larkdesignmake.co.uk. Um, and on there, I've got this uh, kind of a slower version of this video that you can watch again. Or this will be on this page for a while as well. And uh, so, yeah, and then you would carry on doing that. So then you would use that one as the end dot. And then you'd put another square here. You put another square at the same place here. Another square at the same place here. Join with diagonal lines. And can you see? It's starting to build up and make a kind of um, nice shape. But again, if you were to sew it, let me just use a different colour again. You would think about straight lines. So you would maybe do that stitch. You'd carry on and you'd do that one. You'd do that one. You'd turn around and you'd go back up like so, and maybe do all of those verticals first. Then you'd maybe get another bit of thread and you'd do all the horizontals and you'd do that over and over again. And then finally, or you know, whatever order you wanted to, you would do the diagonals. And again, you would keep them to doing the diagonals maybe this way, you could come up and you could come back, back up that way. So it's a little bit of um, thinking a little bit differently um, but trying to plan out your designs and that'll just mean that they don't stretch. You'll notice I'm not using an embroidery hoop and that is part of the process. So that's again, I like these crafts where you don't need much stuff. So you could easily do this on the go and all you need is um, like embroidery thread and um, the, the piece of fabric once you've got a pattern drawn. So it's a nice easy one, you don't need much stuff. And then finally, I hope you've got a big enough piece. I really like this one. And then a friend, again, a friend of mine did this and did it absolutely beautifully where she did like one or two of them, I think in a different color. I think it was one like red and one yellow or I can't remember, but I remember just thinking it was really special. Um, yes, I'm repeating the website. Yeah, it's lark, L-A-R-K, designmake.co.uk. And then there's a tutorials page. And I think it's about halfway down, but it's called Sashiko so you can't miss it and it's like um, over my head rather than this where you get to see my face. You won't get to see my face and I'll go through this a little bit slower without being stressed that I was on the wrong page. Have I mentioned that already? Now, when I looked at this, I was totally confused because I thought, how, how do I draw that line? How do I figure out where that is? But then again, if you stare at it for long enough, you'll see that it's actually a square and then a diamond. Okay, those are the main outside shapes. So let me just draw those. Let me just remember how big they are. It's uh, one, two, three, four, four by four. So I draw a square. The midpoints here. I'm drawing, I'm drawing terrible, I think that's. Okay, so that's my square. And then I'm drawing a diamond. Okay, and then from there, let me just again use a different color so you can see. So, for the square ones, I just remember which way around they are. Oh, yeah. You're coming up two, across two, down one. Okay, so up two, across two, down one. You can do that four times. Two, two, one. Two, two, one. Two, two, one looks a little bit dodgy at this stage so we'll quickly move on <laughs> and then we're doing the diagonal lines so with that one da, 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 oh yeah you go down until you hit the um, diagonal line then you go up to the corner and then you do the one so you can't met you can't count it as much as you can um, the previous set so you just got to go to the diagonal line up to the corner and back so I'm just going to repeat that so to the diagonal line, up to the corner and across. To the diagonal line, um, to, to, oh, I did that slightly wrong, sorry. To the diagonal line, down and across. And the final one, two, two, one. Okay, so again, sorry, mine's a little bit messy, but can you see if I show you this one, it's suggesting that the way you would do it is actually in the kind of the fan motion. So you would use one single thread to do each of the little kind of fold over squares. Um, but again, I think it looks really nice. It looks nice as it is, but if you actually put one that was maybe a different color, 
would make that one pop and look like there's something interesting um, that you're you need to see there so yeah, I think that's most the information um, about Sashiko that I can think of. I'm happy to stay on the line uh, for, for a minute or so and just see if you've got any questions. Um, but like I said, it's just a really relaxing one. It also is quite good for testing your kind of, you know, your brain and trying to figure out some complex shapes. Honestly, just Google Sashiko patterns, stare at them long enough and you'll think, oh, actually that's two diamonds or that's two squares. And then as soon as you get some graph paper, some of the easier ones are done using a square grid. The more complex ones are using an isometric, so a 30 degree angle grid. Um, but again, I would start with this and then you could maybe move up to some isometric ones. And then just a reminder of what you can make. So here's some, also some different patterns. You can see this is just a circle and then lots of straight lines. But again, just using the stitch work looks really effective. This is just parts of a circle um, just laid out in a kind of interesting way. Again these are just circles and these have got circles inside circles um, and again just all about the way that you use the stitches rather than um, the, the like the making it, you wouldn't really make it like that, you'd make it more in a flowing way so you'd have to draw it all out first. Here was just testing how long you could get a needle to go. That was pretty impressive. Here is a square with a few arcs inside it, just repeated on a nine square. And then finally, that is a bit of a tricky one. But again, it is just straight lines doing the same thing over and over again and made to look like a star. Great. And it looks like Carol's on the website. So uh, hopefully you've got a Sashiko fan. Do, um, you know, tag here if you do manage to make anything. Like I said, don't feel like you have to do navy and white. Just grab whatever you've got. Pop on, pop on some television, pop on some music and uh, have a little Sashiko. And I guarantee it's quite an enjoyable little way to spend the afternoon. All right. Thanks for joining. Like I said, sorry I was late and hope to see you again soon. Bye.